Today you're going to learn how to connect to a database using PDO instead of using MySQLi, which is actually what we've been using up to now in these lessons here. So from today on and in the future, we will be using a PDO connection in order to do our uh, course here. So as you can see in front of me here, I have a basic index page and inside the index page, I have nothing special except for a link to my class that has my database connection inside of it. And inside my DBH class, I still have a MySQLi connection going because I want to show you guys the differences between MySQLi and PDO by just simply using the same class that we've been using in all the previous lessons here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do inside the DBH class is I'm going to add a fifth property inside the class. And this is not something we have to do. We could actually do PDO connections without this fifth parameter, but it allows for us to create some additional functionality later on uh, if you wish to. So I'm just going to go ahead and include it since it doesn't hurt anything. So I'm going to go ahead and include another private property that I'm going to call char set, which is the character set that we use inside the database. And inside the connect method here, I'm going to just copy paste from the previous one and just change it to char set and change the value to utf8 mb4, which is just a default character set. So now that we have this, we can actually go ahead and change this MySQLi connection that I have down here into a PDO connection. Do notice that we have one, two, three, four parameters inside MySQLi. And when it comes to PDO, we only have three. Now the difference here is that inside the first parameter, we're going to include a bunch of parameters, if that makes sense. So let me go and show you guys what I mean. I'm gonna go and delete it here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable I'm going to call DSN, which stands for data source name, which is going to be the first parameter we're going to include inside our PDO connection. So I'm going to set it equal to a string. And inside the string, we need to add a couple of different pieces of information. Now, the default ones that everyone adds is, first of all, we need to tell what kind of driver we're using. Then we need to add what host we're using and then the database name. Now the last one that we're going to add is also the character set, which we included as our fifth parameter. Now the most typical database driver that most people are using is called MySQL. So if you're using PHP MyAdmin inside your local host, then you're probably using MySQL as well. Now if you're not using local host or PHP MyAdmin or that sort of thing, and you're a little bit confused about what your driver is, there is a way we can actually get the information from our database and know what kind of driver we're using. So if we were to go inside my index page and just simply write a print R function, print underscore R, parentheses, curly brackets. And inside the print R, I'm going to say we want to run a static method in PDO called PDO colon colon get available drivers, parentheses. And if we were to go back inside my website, you guys can see that we get some information regarding the drivers inside our database. Now mine does actually say MySQL, so if yours does as well, then you just need to follow exactly what I'm doing in this episode. If it says something else with you, then I recommend Googling what you need to change depending on what kind of driver you have, okay? So I'm gonna go back inside my code. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the printr function and I'm gonna go inside my database connection again. So the first property inside my DSN variable is going to be my SQL colon. And then we need to add what kind of host we're using. So I'm gonna say host, I'm gonna set it equal to, and then it needs to be equal to our host, which right now would be the server name, which we set up here. Now I'm using a local host. If you're connected to an online server, then you need to get the server name for that server. So because I'm using local host, I'm gonna just simply go inside my code here, and then after the equal sign, we just simply add in the server name. So I can say we want to add this server name. And then I want to add another string because we need to add another parameter to it or another property. So I'm going to say semicolon. And then we're going to add the DB name, which is the database name. I'm going to set it equal to, do the same thing here. And just simply refer to what we have up here. So we're going to say we have db name, which is equal to in my case test db because that's what I named my database name. So I'm just going to paste it in here. And then the last parameter we're going to add is going to be the char set. So we're going to say char set is going to be equal to, 
And then we're just simply going to add the charset from up here as well. Like so. So now we have everything we need to have inside the DSN. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go down to next line and I'm going to create a variable called PDO, which is going to be the actual PDO connection. So I'm going to say we have a new PDO in capitalized letters, parentheses, and then inside the parentheses, we just need to add three different parameters. The first one is going to be the DSN we just created from up here. So I'm going to paste that in, comma, then the second one is going to be the username for our database, which we have up here. Just going to paste that in. The third one and the last one is going to be the password. So I'm going to just copy paste that one in as well. Like so. Now the last thing we need to do so we can actually connect to the database using other classes is we need to actually return this PDO variable. So I'm going to say we want to return variable PDO. Like so. Now, there's one more thing I want to do here, because what if we get an error message while connecting to the database? Well, what we can do is we can actually go ahead and set up a try catch exception, which means that we can try to run a piece of code and if it gives an error message, then it's going to catch the error and throw an exception. So what I can do is I can go ahead and say we want to create a try catch uh, function. And again, I used a shortcut inside my text editor by writing a uh, try and then tap. And then I got the try catch exception. If you don't have shortcuts inside your text editor, you can just go ahead and write the whole thing out. Now, what I want to do here is I would like to include our code that we just wrote, copy it, delete it, and then insert it inside our try function up here. After we did that, we then need to set up some attributes inside the PDO connection in order to get a proper error message inside uh, the catch function. So what I'm going to do is right before I return the a PDO a variable. I'm going to go ahead and say we want to take the PDO variable and run a set attribute method. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of different parameters inside the method here. The first one is going to be PDO colon colon, which again is a static. Then I'm going to set this one to ATTR, which stands for attribute underscore E R R M O D E, which stands for error mode. Then I want to set the error mode afterwards by saying PDO colon colon, which is a second static. And I want to set E R R M O D E, which is error mode underscore exception. Like so. So what this does now is if we get some kind of error message, then inside the catch function, it's going to take the error and we can then show it inside the website. So what I can do here is I can actually go and make a couple of changes to uh, the default code I got from my shortcut. And instead, I'm going to say we want to get a PDO exception, which we're going to set to variable E, which stands for exception. Then inside the catch function, I'm going to echo the error message by saying connection failed colon space. And then I can go ahead and add the exception afterwards here. So we're going to include the variable e, which is the error message. And then we're going to point to a method called get message, which will now get the actual error message if there is actually an error. So if we were to actually try this and go inside my index page and simply create an object and try to actually run our connect uh, method, then I can say we want to create an object. I want to set it equal to new dbh. Then underneath here, we're going to actually run the connect method. So we're going to say we have variable objects and point to connect parentheses semicolon. So now if I go inside my browser, refresh, you can see we get some kind of error message. And that's because right now my method is actually protected. So we need to change it because this is not the error message we want to see. So I'm going to change it from protected to public. So we can actually run it inside the browser. And now if we were to actually run it, you can see we get no error messages. And that's because everything is like it should be. If we were to actually change some of the properties inside my connection to let's say testdb2, which is not a database that I have, save it, refresh the browser. You can see we get a connection failed and then the error message. So right now it says unknown database, testdb2, which is what we want to get. 
So if I were to go back inside my code and go ahead and just set it back to test DB, so everything is actually working. So this is how we can set up a PDO connection. And in the next episode, we're going to talk about how we can actually spit out data from the database using PDO. So hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I just want to say thank you for all the support you've given me on YouTube and give out a huge thanks to the people on Patreon who supported me on Patreon on a monthly basis. And if you're new and you don't know about Patreon, you can go ahead and click on the link in the description of this video and it'll take you to my Patreon where you can pay a small amount every month either to support me or to download the lesson material for my uh, lessons here on uh, the channel. So I hope you guys will take the time to go and check that out and I hope to see you guys next time.